The pilot does nothing. No regulation, no bias, nothing. And if you want, the F-35 is an aircraft whose cockpit visualization is more like a video game than any other aircraft. Intro. Hey, welcome. This is the third episode of our series dedicated to the information systems on board the F-35. This is based on unclassified information derived from scientific papers from authors connected with Lockheed Martin or the program in general. I suggest you to watch the previous two episodes and the links are at the end of this video. So the problem that the F-35 designers set off to fix was the inability of the pilot to effectively manage the aircraft sensors. And this is not because the pilot is stupid or untrained, there are just too many of them and they are very complex. On a classic four-generation fighter, for example, the pilot may end up uh, endlessly fiddling with the radar and losing track of the overall picture of the battle space. This is something that pilots are trained to avoid. But this is an uphill battle. Sensors have exceeded the ability of humans to manage them properly. And so the solution was to have an algorithm managing the behavior of the information sources within the sensor fusion closed loop. It has three objectives. One, reduce pilot's workload by automating sensor actions and selections. Two, prioritize information requests considering pilot requests, background volume searches and fusion information needs. Three, reconfigure sensor assets to compensate for sensor loss or unavailability. While one and two are very well-known problems, well, even thinking of being capable of doing three, well, that's really ambitious. But this is a story for another time. Because the problem now is, how do we implement this? Obviously, the F-35 is not the first aircraft ever to implement autonomous sensor management. Most of the latest versions of the 4th and 4.5 generation aircraft had some form of automated sensor management. For example, a simple track while scan mode on a radar is a basic form of automated sensor management. However, previous solutions were based on two models. The simplest form is a rule-based model where the objective is to maximize the performance of the sensors. This may seem a good thing, but the problem with this approach is that the algorithm is close coupled with the sensors. I explain. For example, you change the radar warning receiver and then basically you have to rewrite entirely this piece of software to accommodate the new type of sensor. Do you upgrade the radar? Same thing. You are facing a big software rewrite to accommodate the changes. And so on. So other solutions have been explored where the objective this time was to maximize the accuracy of the track information. If you have seen the previous video, you already know what a track is. A track is the information associated with anything that has been detected by the sensors and this information is exchanged the aircraft systems and other aircraft. So the model is focused on maximizing the accuracy of the track data and again this seems a good thing but the issue is that while the single track is optimized the overall value that is provided to the execution of the mission well is not. So it may happen that valuable resources end up being wasted on unimportant tasks. So the F-35 designers had to walk the extra mile, and in this case, they flipped the entire paradigm on its head. In technical terms, the pilot's situational awareness is defined as the combination of times and distances at which the pilot must take a decision. And the pilot awareness requirement is something that exists independently from the sensors. 
So the purpose in this case becomes to provide the pilot with all the relevant information to take a decision without wasting resources on irrelevant data. And you may understand that this is something very different from using the sensors at their best. So that blip that is many hundred miles away back in friendly airspace that looks like a civilian airliner, for example, well, it's not particularly important for the mission. I don't want to know the airline or the exact model. I don't care. Well, the pilot doesn't care. Well, what does this mean? Well, it means that the information boundaries and associated information needs define a dimensional space that can be used to derive a global objective function to support autonomous sensor management, and it can be used to define the sensor and fusion capabilities necessary to support these decisions. Hmm? A benefit from this mapping is that the mission goals can be directly related to the sensor capabilities in terms of range, accuracy and latency. This allows the designer to trace system-level fusion situational awareness requirements to individual sensor performance requirements. That sounds pretty obvious, no? So without getting into the details of what a dimensional space is or what a global objective function does, this in practice means that it is, with this approach, possible to map the specific mission requirement to the specific sensor feature. Let's make an example. So if an F-35 flight wants to attack a bridge that is heavily defended by anti-aircraft defenses, it must be capable to obtain usable target data for its weapons at a safe distance from that specific type of defense. The sensor that you're using, the sensors that are installed on the plane, must be capable of that specific performance for that specific mission. Otherwise, the mission is too dangerous or uh, it's too difficult to execute uh, without too many losses. Let it sink a moment. This is a brilliant approach because it gives the pilots exactly what is needed to accomplish the mission. It is as if with the F-35, you are always guaranteed of being using the correct tool for the job. To be completely honest, I can't stop thinking that this also defines exactly what the aircraft can't do, but I'm not going into that rabbit hole. Okay, so far is the principle, but in practice, what happens? So when in the fusion loop the control is passed to the sensor management function, a few things happen. The existing tracks are prioritized in terms of the mission, as we said, or the potential threat. All the resources, the sensors, are allocated to maintain the existing tracks and improve those tracks that are relevant for the mission. While in background, search and discover always goes on to identify new tracks if they exist. The system also has a concept of sufficiency. That is, if the information about a track is sufficient to successfully execute the mission, no more resources are allocated to improve that specific track. Moreover, notice that with this approach, the sensor is not important as long as the information is sufficiently accurate. That is, the elements of track characterization may be obtained by the radar, by the DAS, by the optronics, by anything else, and all of this is actually transparent to the pilot. However, the pilot can influence the prioritization according to its own judgment. He or she can define a line of sight to be preferentially investigated, or they can select a track, and that track then is automatically elevated in the priority list. And on the basis of this prioritization, the aircraft directs searches and scans both active and passive to improve the quality of the tracks up to the sufficient quality. 
The pilot does nothing. No regulation, no bias, nothing. And since the fusion loop happens around once every second, the pilot is effectively shown an evolving situation on the big screen in the cockpit. And if you want, the F-35 is an aircraft whose cockpit visualization is more like a video game than any other aircraft, at least that we know. And I personally find somewhat ironic that to be the best, or supposedly the best, well, you need to look like a video game. But as usual, this is not the full picture, because in this episode we have overlooked an extremely important sensor for the F-35, that is the data that the F-35 is receiving from the other aircraft. But this will be the subject of the fourth and last episode in this series. On this channel we have talked a lot about the F-35 and all the issues, the problem, the good and the bad that comes with this aircraft. And those videos are going to appear beside me. So in the meanwhile, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this and see you there.